And we're back. Hey, everybody, it's your host, Darren Carter, the party starter, host of the Pocket Party Podcast. If it's your first time watching, thank you. And if you've been here before, thanks for coming back. And uh, don't forget, please do us a huge favor, leave some comments on the YouTube video. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please leave a comment. It really helps. Give us five stars and a review. And gate dates out the gate. If you're anywhere near Burbank, California, we will be performing at Flappers June 24th. John DeResta, Mike Black, and others. Also, I'm coming to Texas. I will be coming to San Antonio. And also, I'll be playing Goofies in New Braunfels. <laughs> in, Showing uh, off. In July. And uh, yeah, Aren't so you at the Punjab Palace <laughs> Yeah, you're not. in September? Yeah, we're not going to talk about that one, but uh, that's, uh, that's a private gig. No, <laughs> Corporate. Uh, Corporate. It's a corporate gig. There you go. Yeah. And I'll be yeah, at Nate. Shots fired at Central 1013. Yeah. Corporate gig at Punjab Palace. Central. Be advised, this is Officer the rest of 1013. That's right. Send, send back up. I'm on the podcast again, the Pocket Party Podcast. Naples, Florida. I'll be coming to Naples, Florida in August. Off Captain the hook. Bryant. Central. Be advised, he's at Off the Hook. Dude, I wish I had like all those are great. Those are great gigs, but I wish I had like a major like arena tours and then like whoever the other comic is, he's like. Yeah, yeah watch be, this. Um, There's a comedian in yeah. L.A. who not only sells out the Staples Center, which is now called Crypto.com. Dude, I went there, and I'll tell you all about it. Not only does he sell out that place, in one night, he gets a cut of the parking. What's up? Can dude, you imagine that? No, dude, I know. Can you? <laughs> I think we, I think we, I think parking was like twenty five bucks for us Central. There. Uh, be advised, uh, we have a uh, uh, male comedian. He's Hispanic, and uh, not only is he getting uh, eighty dollars a seat, uh, Central. Be advised, he gets a cut of the of the parking. <laughs> mass props, mass props, Central. Be advised, mass props. My friend went to see <laughs> Paul McCartney, and they said the parking was like 80 bucks to go see Paul McCartney. <laughs> you can't go to any of those things. I know. Why? Why? Let me you ask, can't. Let me uh, ask. You could do anything you want in the world. You could do anything. You're an entertainer. You got money coming in. Okay. You, got, you, got, you don't really have to clock in. You could time out and be like, you know what? I'm taking this night off. I'm going to go. Is there anybody you would go see now? By the way, let's introduce yourself. This is John DeResta, former NYPD cop, worked in the subways for- a, Transit cop yes. for nine years. From 1986 to about 94. And then the NYPD took us over for three more years for me. So I was a member of two police departments. Went to um, two different police academies. Wow. Had two different shield numbers. I was 1623 when I was transit. And do you know what I was uh, in uh, when we switched to NYPD? I have no idea. 1623. Oh. But they re gave me a new shield. The old shield said transit up in here. Oh. And then uh, I'm pretty sure it's kind of a proud moment. They replaced it with 1623, and it said New York City Police Department. It didn't have the word transit in it. Mm. Star bellied snitch. Wow. Transit. <laughs> yeah. You, you felt, get laughed at? Yeah, you felt good because people are like, is it a cop? Oh, it's transit. Okay. It's like, a, <laughs> a you want to know something? Yeah. I don't want to drop names. <clears throat> Michael Caine told me it was rude. <laughs> Remember Tom Snyder? Yeah. I told I was on Tom Snyder four times in 16 months, and three of the four times I was still a cop. Mm. I literally got on his show, had to do 20 to 25 minutes with no audience, and I would tell him what I did on last night's shift as a New York City transit cop, and he was on the edge of his seat, and uh, and I told him uh, I couldn't wait to get free food. New York City, all you hear about from your, our dads, free food, free food, it's on the arm. You know what that means? Mm -mm. It's on oh, the arm. Oh, it's on the clock? Nope, it means it's free. Oh. It's on the arm. It's a, totally inside NY. He's on the, so it, like, you know, hey, we're going to uh, the pizza parlor in Sheepshead Bay. It's on the arm. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like a signal between yeah, yeah. cops. Yeah. And then guys would go there three times a day. They'd go there off duty because <laughs> there was such schnurras. Yeah. They, it was on the arm. Yeah. And I couldn't wait to get free food. I looked forward to it. Just I, I was going to be enamored of who's going to give me free food first. Yeah. And I told this story to Tom Schneider <clears throat> when he asked if transit was different from NYPD. And on a Friday night, you work alone. Where Whatever time your lunch is at midnight, let's say, you get an hour. You get off at that next station. But now you're in the middle of a strange neighborhood in New York City 
in a police uniform. You don't know where you, which diners are off. So, you know, yeah. you, you literally go into places that could be on like a list that you're not even allowed in. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just you, at no less being in a strange neighborhood. It's one thing to be like lost. Another thing when you when you're wearing a police uniform. Police uniform so that weird. doesn't work when it, you're in the subway. And uh, let me think, Tom. Sh- oh. I get it's Friday night. I go to a diner and it's packed with Saturday night fever. The haircuts, hey, bada bing, bada boom, got a boots, and it's a diner. Yeah. And it's packed. Every table has people drunk and high and talking at like one in the morning. And here comes a fucking asshole from transit in a uniform. Yeah. But they don't know it's transit. They just know they, it's they, they just they see the hat, the fucking you, you might as well have a clown outfit on. Oh really? But worse. Yeah. But worse, because you, yeah. it's just dangerous. Some people don't like you for no yeah, reason. Yeah. You could get shot for, at any moment. You know, I get, I, when I became a New York City transit cop in 1986, the three most dangerous jobs, did I ever tell you this? I'm sure no, I have. No. You didn't know this? No. In 1986, July, the three most dangerous jobs in the world, and this allegedly include military and Alaskan crab fishermen, which no one knew about then. New York City cab driver mm-hmm. and New York City transit cop. Wow. Most dangerous job in the world because you work alone. So I get, I have a, like a cheeseburger deluxe, a Diet Coke, and everyone's looking at me and staring at me. It was, and I got a bill. Like, you know, old lady writes it up. It's $8 for you, officer. It's $8 for you. Mm, it's $8. Careful. I don't want to break your whole setup. <laughs> So I take it to the front in a diner in New York. Then you take it to, you know, Theo or George, yeah. the guy with the comey over, yeah. you know, the yellow teeth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> I give him the thing. He's got the big register and he looks and he looks at me and goes, Officer, for you, it's on the arm. Oh, he actually knew the phrase He's, too. Oh, he knew it because, you know, they're giving it to, it's on the arm. Mm. It's on the arm. And I went, fucking funny story. I got it. Like, I was looking forward to this more than making an arrest. Yeah. And I said, thanks, bro. And I turned like this, and I took three steps, and he goes, oh, you transit. Oh, You transit. No. 850, my, oh, for here, my oh, friend. Oh, no. It's 850 for you. transit. Oh. You transit. Wow. Tom Snyder interviewed 20,000 people. Do you want to know who his top three favorites were out of 20,000 people? Did I mention that? Hmm. Let me guess. Burt Reynolds? Was he up there? No. Sylvester Stallone? No. Hmm. Frank Sinatra? No. Elvis Presley? No. Clint Eastwood? No. John DeResta? Yes. That's one of them. Who are the other two? John DeResta, John Lennon. Oh, damn. No Maybe way. you heard of him. <laughs> Look that way. He's getting all in there. Maybe you heard of him. He's peacocking. John Lennon. I'm peacocking. All right. John Lennon, John DeResta. Oh, the last one you're never going to believe. Guy or girl? Guy. Big trouble on the internet. Big trouble. Right CNN. now he is. A year Jeffrey ago. Tubin. Jeffrey Tubin. Wow. He was uh, dancing with himself. <laughs> like Billy Idol. But he, uh, this Tom Snyder guy, he absolutely loved um, wow. these jokes. Yeah, these and stories, I, I these just stories. found an old phone yeah. book. I just found an old, and I, I've had a lot of phone books, and uh, it hit me like a ton of bricks that the one I had when I was a teenager <clears throat> had every comedy club in it. Oh. Every comedy club. Wow. And I wasn't a comedian, but yeah. it was like, oh, I must have been going a lot. Yeah, you know what I mean. I was. It was crazy how interested I was. What do you mean phone book? You mean like the phone? My you, phone you, book that I write in, okay, like a yeah. little like black your address book. book. Or, yeah, yeah, address yeah. book. I thought you yeah. meant like a thick phone book that they. Now gave you're you. gonna second guess it? No. Yeah. yeah, right. Like a black book. Yeah, and um, it's right there. And I just I only opened two pages, and one said Tom Snyder's home number. Pound Tom it. Tom Snyder's home number. Have you called it? He's dead. I know, but you no, still call it. No, I haven't called it. it. He, uh, he was, I had his email, too. And the other one was, I, and I haven't looked through the whole book. The other one was Rock Rubin. 
He was a writer on uh, oh. and a comedian. He was a writer on uh, Kevin James, all of Kevin James stuff. I've heard of Rick Rubin. No, no, this is Rock. You don't know Rock Rubin? No, I know oh, Rick Rubin. Wildly funny. Long oh. Island, Flid. Wow. Straight up, pound it for the Flid. OG Flid. And who was the other number? Um, who were we talking about? Rock Hudson. No, Rock. Oh! <laughs> pound, Dude. Pound it. <laughs> Have a nice class. Monkey pox. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> no, what was his name? No, you said Rock Rubin. Tom I Snyder. think you had a uh, Freudian slip. R- Rock Hudson. Absolutely. This is Rock Hudson. No, this is Rocky. Funny. Um, no, and believe it or not, the very first page was a pretty big comedian now. And I can't remember who it was. I could retrieve it. I think it's right there on the nah, table. We probably won't no, no, know but it. it's no. I, I'm just saying it was yeah, like. Yeah. And you knew it was the guy. You got oh, the guy's it, number. It, it was like. Uh, it might have been like it might have been like Colin Quinn oh, or cool. Greg Giraldo. Wow. Like it was someone that I, I was like, oh my god, I had this dude's phone number. Wow, we were friends. You should call it or text him. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. I don't I, remember who it was, but it's. It's right yeah, over there. Yeah, I wouldn't really text, because if you were 18 at the time, I doubt it was a cell phone. No, you know who yeah. I just texted? Uh, hopefully this gets back to him. I'm not sure if it be via this show, though. Pocket Party Podcast. <laughs> Central B advised I'm still doing the Pocket Party Podcast. <laughs> uh, we just had to uh, move the camera so we didn't see my uh, refrigerator. <laughs> <coughs> I found Steve Buscemi's phone number. Oh. 718 718- something 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 and i texted it and i said hey this you know i worded it all you know yeah yeah i had a really you know i'm not looking for a gig but remember me yeah you know what i mean we had fun together you came to my little one-man show with your brother he was a firefighter right he was a new york city firefighter yeah. and a stand-up comedian for a very short time wow and fantastically funny in the greatest movie ever made fargo Mm-hmm. Blood has been shed, Jerry. Mm. We stop at Pancake's house, you know. Hey, man, I don't want any more pancakes. A place I can get a shot and a beer. When did you text him and has he texted we back? We stop at Pancake's house, you know. Do you remember these guys in the car? I never saw the movie. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you just got to play along. <laughs> Hold on. Dude, be careful. Fargo, wood chipper, uh, right. Minneapolis. Right, right, right. And that was Buscemi's North foot Dakota. sticking out. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So, uh, when did you text him? And only he... about three weeks ago. Oh, is he, is he texted back yet? This is a landline. Oh. That's what it said. This is a landline. Oh. It was from 25 years ago. And you didn't want to call it. Ah. Like, it's kind of, then it gets weird. Uh, who? Yeah. John DeResta. Uh, were you housing? You were a housing cop or Port Authority? No, no, I was transit. Oh, transit. Would you fail the test? 850. Transit, it's 850. That's funny, callback on the arm. On the arm. Yeah. So tell me about the places where it did work and, wh- and how much you took. Oh, well, I, I, you that's got? funny. Eventually, I got out of the subway, and then you get to learn the neighborhood. When you're in a police car. You know where you could eat for free on the arm? Subway. Oh, zing. Is that a Subway double on Tondo? Yeah. Ha-cha-cha. That's the only place you guys were invited. No, what's no, you ne- guys watch belong this. here. Watch, Subway. What's next? Under Duresta jokes? Under Duresta. Yeah, you know I mean, those I've heard. Oh, gosh. You know, you're under Duresta. Yeah. Never arrested. Hey, by the way, I did a police uh, fundraiser last Wednesday at, the, at Levity Live at Oxnard. And I, uh, I told one of the guys, like, oh, yeah, next time we do this, we got to get John DeResta on it. And I said, and, I, and I'm not sure if I'd said the, the joke right, but I said he was on the job 12 years, had nine arrests. And That's they, it. They laughed. Yeah, dude, it's so... It's, I didn't even know what I was saying, and they laughed. It's such a funny joke. It killed tonight. It Last night... It, it killed 25 years ago. I saw some old video of you. It's like, <laughs> it's, you know what I mean? It kills... You know where it kills it the most? It kills old phone book you have. <laughs> it, I'll tell you the yeah. history on that joke. Yeah. Um, what was the joke? 12 years, <laughs> nine arrests. At Cupcake Studio, I was doing a benefit for a friend of mine that made a movie called Walnuts, and he needed some money to finish it. And I was the big guest. They had an auction, not a whole hand Ooh. job, you know, and then a comedy show. Yeah. And... Uh, it was a Sunday night because I worked at a swap meet selling my furniture. And I remember saying, oh, Sunday night, you know, come on. And, and you know, 
It's not a regular show. It's people have to come because they're friends with someone's friend. You know what I mean? They're not, they're not invested. And I said, I was a New York City cop. I had nine arrests in 12 years. And that night, Cupcake Studios right here, North Hollywood, I got a standing ovation. Nice. And it's a joke where if I always repeat it, and mm-hmm. if it gets a huge laugh and I repeat it, it gets a huge laugh. If it gets nothing, I sell it and I go, did you guys hear me? I had nine arrests in 12 years, all through the 80s and 90s in the subway of New York Mm -hmm. alone. And then I have to decide whether I still talk about being a cop Mm. or this kills lately. I had nine arrests in 12 years. You guys heard that. Let me repeat that. It's a record. I'm the worst cop in the history of New York City. I can call myself that. (laughs) I had nine arrests in 12 years. And if it gets a nice laugh, I go, my own son has been arrested more times than that. (laughs) And it gets, usually, it gets a really funny laugh and, and... I kind of go right into that. Uh, and I guess it depends on, like, if you do. You got to make the decision. And if also if you do it for a bunch of, like, you know, I guess. Oh, okay. Watch yeah. this. It, it, on a lighter note. Yeah. It's proof. I do a, I've, I've done a lot of cop gigs where they don't know me. I'm not that famous. And they don't even want to know me because this guy, look at. On the flyer, this guy says he was on the job in New York. <laughs> yeah. On the flyer. Right. And we're doing it now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this guy, yeah. he's probably auxiliary hmm. volunteer. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'll say, hey, guys, you know, get it out of the way up quick to get him on my, uh, you know, to get him on my side. I was a uh, New York City cop for 12 years. Um, you know, oh, and that usually I kind of switch gears and go, well, I was transit. You know, worked in the subway. Like, some people just laugh at the rhythm of that, that I wasn't a real cop. Yeah. Um, but when I say I was a... I, I cocked the gun this way. I go... I, I could say, um, hey, I was a New York City cop for 12 years. And half the time, everyone looks at each other like, yeah, right? I go, I could prove it. I had nine arrests in 12 years. And it's such a funny way to tell other cops... That you did nothing, <laughs> and they yeah. and everyone knows a guy like that in New York City. Fifty percent of us were there to have fun and get free food and get out of parking tickets and get a pension and move to Florida. Mm. It's a, you know what I mean. Yeah. Any, any police work was a inconvenience. I wonder if that's why the crime is so high there. All those it was an inconvenience and, yeah. to you know. We used to play chicken. This is a true story I never told anyone. So I got to drive the sergeant. Nobody else wanted to drive him. So I kept, it trickled down to me. Yeah. And I didn't even know where. I was in the subway for five years. Now I'm above the ground. I don't even know where. Like if we had we, such will be advised, 1085, so New York, New York, out New York, talking booth. I'm about to close then, Central, 1085, 1085, Central, 1085. I didn't even know how to get there. Because I didn't know what streets it was. It was really weird. But when I started to drive him... By the way, I love it when you do that. When you did that on the phone the other day, it sounds like I'm really listening to a police radio. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do it again? Central will be advised. Uh, this is Officer DeResta Shield 1623 of Southbound B of Coney Island. I got a guy having a grand mal, a grand mal seizure. Central, a fourth width ambulance, backup, 1085. Having a grand mal seizure. Hold up. <laughs> DeResta, what's your 1020? <laughs> Hold on. 10-4 officer, you got a grandma that thinks she's Julius Caesar. No, grandma seizure. Grandma yeah. seizure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Ten, yeah, 10-4. Yeah, What's your 10-20? All I know is CB radio language. <laughs> Breaker 1-9, we got a 1-7, we got a bear in the sky. Yeah, 10-4. That's a hillbilly with summer teeth, central. Summer here, summer there. Summer there. <laughs> I got a lot lizard. <laughs> what did you guys call prostitutes? I, could, I think yeah, the tr- lot lizard. I learned a hundred years oh, later. Oh yeah, because the truckers and the, and the they call the well. Watch the this. Lot I don't lizards. mean to get. To, it's yeah. a weird that I became a cop in Coney Island, Brooklyn, for five years, mm. from like 1987 to like 1993. <coughs> and Coney Island was my steady station. Mm. If you ever saw the Nathans, it was right yeah. on the opposite corner. Yeah. So you're giving this sergeant a ride. You're, I don't want to. Oh, that's right. I was giving the sergeant a ride, and uh, what's up, guys? How you like the show so far? Pretty good, right? 
kind of weird that I'm out here in the country with the chair next to me. But anyways, if you like this show and you want to help out, go to Cameo. I do birthday shout outs, anniversary shout outs. Or if you just want to do a donation, go to DarrenCarter.com, PayPal, or Venmo at Darren Carter Comic. Now let's get back to the show. We didn't know where we were going. And uh, similar to the story, I forgot where I was going with the sergeant. Yeah. But we had a bunch of, uh, oh no, we used to play chicken. I swear to God, no one would ever believe this. So I kind of taught him, like I was like, if anyone needs help, a cop or civilian, a crime is really happening, mm. we're going. I was the driver. We're going. But I kind of convinced him in a funny way. Going, eh, any other stuff. Eh, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Who's zooming who? You know, we're parked on the boardwalk. Girls are coming over and saying hello to us. We're smoking cigars like dicks in a police. <clears throat> Dude, we park at the dead end cause, so now no one can get you from behind. We used to go yeah. on the boardwalk at Coney Island, go to the very end and back our car up to the end so the ass of our car was up against a brick wall yeah so we couldn't get ambushed right and then you had 50 60 schmucks an hour that touched the railing turn around and go back and when they touched the railing they would see me and tony bravada my sergeant hey what's up how's it going hey you guys come here slip your beer come down you know, get, get you. what do you mean it, touch the railing because they turned mean? around we were at the end of the boardwalk oh. so if they were doing a three mile oh, walk i see yeah 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 you know, oh, I see what like you're saying. Dicks, they touch the little OCD type of thing. Yeah, like, yeah, I they touch the, the. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's funny. <laughs> I thought you knew everyone touches the railing. Very few people. It's I, a weird. Tactic. I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because at the farm we do that. Like, there's when you walk way to the end of the field. <laughs> I like to touch the thing, but then like uh, I thought everyone could uh, sit in there and ready for this. But some people are like, "Well, look at those germs on it. I ain't touching that dirty." Like, so we would yeah. get. So yeah. Literally, there'd be two or three cars out in mm -hmm. Coney Island in the whole South Brooklyn of District 34 where I worked. Yeah. And you'd get a call. Any units uh, be advised on uh, Bay 50 of the street. We got a, uh, we got a male uh, undomiciled. He's naked. He's covered in feces. Any units? Any oh, units? Gosh. Bay 50th. Any units? And guess what we would do? Not hear it. We would play chicken for who's like... You know, 15 minutes would go by. What's that mean, play chicken? Not answer the radio. Like, oh, all wow. four of us would hold off. It's like, oh, it was a game of chess. <laughs> Who was the and weakest? They, they, they would come on again like, <laughs> hello? Or no, they, they would say, uh, uh, any units in the Coney Island area, you got a, a Bay 50 at the Southbound Mezzanine, right by the token clerk, you got a male, black, completely naked, covered in head to toe and feces. Any units. Oh, gosh. And then, hold on, and then, like, a minute would go by, and she'd go, Okay, no response. District 34, District 3401, District 3402, and District 3403. No response. Time now, zero, one, three hours. Like she'd put it out that I called and no one's answering. Wow. And then did you guys feel like, oh, no. Yeah, well, somebody getting... would get, somebody would buckle and go, hey, uh, 3403. Uh, we're uh, five minutes out. Because yeah, you want to get in yeah, trouble. We were in a dead spot. Wow. We were in a dead oh, spot. Dead <laughs> spot. Oh, Dude, every, every lie in the book. <laughs> <Dead spot. All laughs> <right. Yeah. laughs> wow! And we used to play chicken with the radio And then sometimes And I know this is crazy This is the way I remember it We would turn it all the way down But that would be a danger to other cops mm -hmm. Right? Because we were in a police car to yeah. respond Yeah, yeah, yeah um, But I remember something about someone At least a fellow transit cop said Hey, you guys were playing chicken? We were out there we didn't even have a radio on, <laughs> like you know, like yeah, yeah. like there, there's there's no day one. Yeah, yeah. We didn't even have a radio on. They yeah. click it off. Wow. Just to not, <laughs> just to not even. You don't even it. know it has an off button if you're a civilian. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Coney Island. Oh my gosh. So, so, you so can now, Google this up. The first night I worked as a transit cop in Coney Island. Because I was a cop for about a year, and I worked in Manhattan. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to pay a toll. I don't want to go over a bridge and a tunnel. And this Coney Island crew in District 34, the Magic Kingdom. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Or you're reading your emails? Tell me this. Uh, you told me to Google something. Okay, hold on. What am I going to Google? So I transferred to Coney Island because I kind of got the sense that these guys were fun and funnier and more into... 
hanging out and getting funny stories every night and coming back to it. Like 30 guys would come off the train and everyone, I had a hooker, I had this, I got a guy run over by the train, yeah. Papa son, no come home, chop suey. Yeah. You know what I mean? We don't have yeah. to get into that one. Yeah, yeah. All That's the- a private story. They could come yeah. to our show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? We don't want to yeah. get canceled. Right, right. Papa son, no come home. Why? Chop suey. Look, you're afraid to say it. Central, be advised. He just pussied out of a bit. He went cross-eyed. He went cross-eyed and decided. We told this story about 19 podcasts ago. <laughs> I do remember it. It was sad. So Yeah, yeah. It involves uh, Papa son, no come home. Why? <laughs> Central 1085. I, I pitched it to him a second story, time. You let I us pitched know. it to you him a second time, and he, he forgot to close his glove. Let's get on to some lighter <laughs> stuff. You told me to Google some. What am I supposed to Google? No, the first night I got transferred to Coney Island, a prostitute was killed. Oh, God. With, with a, a bow and arrow. And arrow. <laughs> with a bow and arrow. I said, let's do some lighter stuff. <laughs> Three, two, one. Who's the asshole? <laughs> Three, two, one. Who's, Who's the, the asshole, asshole now? now? I pay attention. I thought, look, Look, that's how yeah. jacked up I am that a hooker being killed by a crossbow to me is more interesting than it is sad. Dude, it's it's both. It's interesting. But uh <laughs> but we will lighten it up. Uh <laughs> but I like the radio Central V advice, time to switch gears. Uh I'm gonna be moving forward with some happy stuff. Good pocket party podcast. Keeping it light, keeping it loose, keeping it late night. Central be advised. <laughs> Conditions norm, conditions norm. Is that what it is? Conditions norm? Condition normal. Condition normal. Oh, oh, ready for this? This is really funny. 90X. You make every call 90X. You know why? No. No memo book, no paper. When you get back to the place, the district, Yeah. It's all you put in your memo book is, uh, you know, uh, know, 0900 hours arrived at, uh, you know, Avenue B, you know what I mean? Or uh, Van Sicklin. Uh, nobody here in the mezzanine to complain about anything. It's 90x. So in other words, you'd go Central B advise. This is uh, Officer Director Van Sicklin. I'm out here on that uh, call that there was a rowdy passenger uh, intimidating token booth. Uh, I'm here. There's no one here. Token booth good. Uh, so we're gonna mark that at 90x. Thank you. <laughs> so 90x was. You make everything 90x. Do you dig why? I, no, why? Because you don't want to have any. Yeah, records. no, no memo book, no paperwork. No, you don't even have to. Yeah. You don't even have to take anyone's name. That's good. No memo, no paper. So I'm listening to this audio book. Okay, so it's you know I like listening to these audio books, and uh, this was about written by a guy who was friends with Frank Sinatra, and he talks about born in 1951, New York, being Italian, even though he was fair skinned and had flaming red hair, you know, and he's like, but so he felt like he had to really make up for that by proving you know like that he was italian when he'd go into certain situations and this guy was also a musician and so he said that he purposely learned like how to cook italian dishes and how to speak italian he learned even like the superstitions and i asked you about one of them um and you'd heard of it is it called the maluk getting the evil it's called um again it goes all the way back to Archie Bunker. <laughs> and there's a whole episode that someone yeah. gave him the Maluk. Yeah. Or Maloik. Maloik. You never heard it? It's pronounced Maloik or Maluk. I've heard something like but that. But the Maloik yeah. is yeah. the way that they, they taught us on TV, the it was, Maloik. It was probably be like, I'm thinking it went back to Italy, but you're like, all the way back to Archie Bunker, second season, third episode. Yeah, the Maloik. He, the someone Jefferson, gave him the Maloik. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it means it like the, back, the it evil eye, right? It goes back to Italy, yeah, as a, like... They put the horns on you. They're giving you a bad spell. Wow. You know what I mean? Or they said if someone's talking nice about you, but they're really jealous, they said that's also oh, another... Oh, I never heard. That's yeah, another he, reason to give them a loik? Yeah, that's like another... They're, that's they're an, phonies? That's another way that you get... And he said the way to ward off the evilness uh, in this Italian culture, according to this book I'm listening to, he said is you secretly put your hand in your pocket and give yourself horns in your pocket. And so I was asking you... Oh, that I what, never heard. ...what the that, horns are. It's the, is the, it, that's is it that? this... Well, wow. again, they oh, did like, it like, like this, this, yeah. And Ronnie James Dio adopted it from his Italian grandfather or his mm. grandmother. Oh, that makes sense. Oh no, he, 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 you know, everyone thinks that he's this. He is the greatest heavy metal singer that ever lived, and everyone knows he invented this. But he just grabbed it from his ninety-year-old grandmother, mm. and, oh, and and he turned horns, it this yeah. way. 
He said that every Italian <laughs> in his neighborhood would either have a, a crucifix or a, a horn on their... That was a different... That, that was like squiggly a squiggly little... little yeah, yeah, I might have had one of those. He's, Everyone in Long Island had one of those. He said you could uh, you could also <laughs> ward off the, the, uh, the evil eye or whatever, the evilness with uh, red, the color red. No, so, I never heard that. So he had a jacket made up with like fire engine red. It was li- you know mm. lined with fire engine red. I know that I grew up in a certain part of Long Island where everybody was Jewish, white trash, kind of Irish... Uh, kind of mid-level Italian, and uh, that was it. <laughs> What's mid-level? Like, second- like you know, like not like Tony Soprano. You know, like yeah. all the fathers were working. Yeah, marble, tile, gardener. Mm-hmm. In Long Island, in the part of Long Island I grew up in, all your gardeners were Italian families that made. Mm. They everyone did it. You know what I mean? Everyone had a garden. Everybody had a garden. Uh, no, no, it was more like the lawn, the leaves. Mm. Then they all, guess what they all did every winter? Uh, I'd be surprised if you don't know this. Mm. Right? Because now everything's yeah. oh, dead. They oh, would, uh, they would snow, they would uh, clear your uh, They your shovel walkways. parking lots. Shovel parking lots. Yeah, like in big trucks yeah. or shovel snow. I used to go snow shoveling. Wow. Dude, I'm eight years old and I'm making a deal with like a 90-year-old Jewish grandmother. Like, and I got like three guys behind me. Yeah. We'll do, uh, we'll do the, this side of the car, the driveway and the front. 15 I'll give you seven <laughs> we'll do it for 10 because there's four of us we get two dollars each <clears throat> I'll give you nine and I'll make hot chocolates <laughs> dude is a true story That's we cool. go from door to door like this little it's like a mafia dude it's funny how you guys probably learned a lot of business that way too on the it's East Coast weird like to that. even think back on it and yeah. then watch this when we made our money when we got our we, yeah. we, everyone got their piece mm-hmm. everyone got their their beak sufficiently wet yeah we would go back to my house because my mom had a day job and my dad was a new york city fireman and we'd get to my house at like two in the afternoon and we'd be like 10 years old counting up the money and making like spaghetti, like legitimately making spaghetti like, like 10 years old. <laughs> That's awesome. And we had a snow yeah. day. Let me add that. The reason we all posse up and there was no parents, yeah. they had to go to work, but school was a snow day. And we were like left on our own to roam yeah. and go skitching. You know what skitching is? No. After oh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. After you get your, your beak wet with the snow shoveling, <laughs> yeah. every, everyone gets their piece. You go celebrate at a stop sign, and you grab onto a bumper, and you sl- you crouch down and slide. Wow. And the Volkswagen Bug had the best bumper. It was like a handle. Yeah. And you'd get six kids all across, all crunched down, and somebody would be on the outside, like almost in the other traffic. And what are you, uh, <laughs> you're just getting dragged? You're just getting dragged, and it's like skiing. It's like white trash and skiing. And they knew you guys were dragging, or no? Uh, some knew, and some didn't. Most of the time, you all ran out of a bush. Like some crazy like yeah. Twilight Zone. Oh, you just jump on the e- bumper. Everybody, boom. yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. <laughs> and or watch this. You had a distractor, an agitator that would, yeah. you know, get their attention. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. There so is, the driver doesn't even notice. <laughs> and then <Yeah>. everybody. <laughs> did every, how fast did it get going? Uh, listen, you know, there was guys that to this day, John Caracciola, you know, he was the king. You know what I mean? You guys would all let go and chicken out. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he it's would- kind of like. Um, it, the being the greatest sketcher is kind of like uh, when Snoop Dogg says, uh, first to blast, last to dash. You know what I mean? First yeah. one on the bumper, yeah. last one. Wow. <laughs> how, do, you, do you remember how high? Would you, would you like get up there like 10 miles an hour, 15, Yeah, you'd 20? get like till the next stop sign, but they're driving on snow. Yeah. And then at the next stop sign, everyone fell off. I'm like, okay, that's enough. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And then you went back up. Wow. So we, we would, they, out here we would do stuff like that on, on skateboards. I never did, but other kids oh, did. Yeah, I, I'm a skateboarder, old school. Yeah. And uh, me and Vinny DiNapoli were the two best skateboarders in Franklin Elementary. How good were Pound you? Pound it. I was, the, I was the best. I could do the 180, 180, 180, 180, 360. Yeah, yeah I could do all that. I had been yeah. to two or three skateboard parks. Not nice. a lot, but I yeah. bought, and I bought the magazines. I was hooked on all the magazines. Yeah, dude. No, I was the real deal. And since we had a workshop, we forever, and this is a really weird thing, would put skateboard wheels on sheets of plywood, jet skis, 
You know what I mean? Like yeah. anything that had a flat-ish surface. Yeah. Like a we, giant skateboard. It, 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 giant, small skis on skis like a longboard like I think. A, yeah, yeah just all kinds of weird stuff the weirdest one was and, and how did those work out okay some were good some were bad and we lived right near a hill that just got mm. repaved every single day we we're all at felta yeah right? that's the street to 100 feet from my house slightest little thing but it had big it was cement and it had such big grooves in it that weeds grew up and out mm. so you boom boom as soon as your front yeah. wheels hit that yeah. And then out of nowhere, the gods opened up. It was like winning the lottery. We woke up one day, and Felta had a perfect blacktop. Oh. And it was where me, Mike O'Rourke, Sean O'Rourke, Tommy Fink, John Bonziglia, Victor Storna. This is where we all went and rode skateboards, just down the slightest Whoa. little hill. And that's where we would take a sheet of plywood with skateboard wheels on it. Like, everyone would get on it. Yeah. Like, jackass. We, we yeah. were doing this before yeah. jackass. But the weirdest one was the back of a school chair had, like, a shaped thing where you would put yeah. your back like, like this. Like a curve. A curve. Yeah. And we put skateboard wheels on it. Wow. So the wheels had to be really close to be touching the ground. And then if you wanted to do this... Yeah, kind of 180, 360 stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was it was so curled up that it was a completely different skill. It was like a hammock. It was like a hammock on wheels. It was like, like a, a banana shape, but almost. even with more of a, a wow. curve, mm. like your penis. Oh, central ten thirteen, ten thirteen. He says he's got a penis, got a curve in his central, and he's got red pubic hair. Uh, Darusta went dirty. <laughs> he went dirty. We're telling a sweet uh, skateboard story, memories from the seventies. <laughs> he went dirty. He went, he went bozo pubic hair jokes. <laughs> Dude, I was big into skateboarding too, man. Like it, it was like the end of the seventies, you know. I watch this. I it lasted so long for me. Yeah. That before I got transferred to District Thirty Four in Coney Island in the fall of eighty seven. From January to the summer, I worked in District 1 in Manhattan, mm. right on Columbus Circle, in uh, kind of right in midtown Manhattan, right by Central Park, the corner. You follow? Mm -hmm. And where we parked our cars up on the street, and then we went down the stairs, our District 1 was at the other end of the platform. So it was the full length of maybe a football field or whatever that, that is. And I used to take my skateboard nice. and ride it from one end to the other because it was a smooth... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I could never do that now, ever. I wouldn't even think of getting on a skateboard. Mm. But not only was I skateboarding in the subway and I was on the job, you know, in civilian clothes, <laughs> then I would carry that skateboard into District 1. And I, I didn't know this till years later. I got labeled as like a weirdo, hippie, flid... <laughs> You know, they thought you were the guy that was like, "Hey, guys, let's go do drum, drum, drum circles and yeah, hacky yeah, sacks." Yeah, yeah, that's the way they looked at it. Hacky sacks and in the park. I had the biggest perfect skateboard. I don't know what brand, what wheels, and I was into plexiglass mirror. So I would take plexiglass and cut it on a bandsaw. Mm. So I had tiles mm. of clear mirror and red, like fifty of them. Cool. And I put them on the underbelly of my skateboard. Ooh. So when you were carrying it, it was reflecting. Oh, that's cool. Like a checkered. And yeah. it looked like glass. It was like, like people would say, yo, bro, how do you get glass on your skateboard? Maybe you could sell that now. How do you get glass on your skateboard, yeah. bro? Don't clown me. He's clowning me. And uh, so that added to my, you know, yeah, he, you sh you he shouldn't be a cop. You didn't just run down to like big five sporting goods and buy a no no i was I, I, again Dude, I, why don't you sell a skateboard like like just make one like what you just said <laughs> the under thing you know do that and then take it down and, with one of your tables just a random skateboard mm. a little you know why not that's a good idea the way you described it like almost like stained glass with a mirror yeah, it looks like stain it looks that'd like real cool. glass that'd be very cool yeah why not yeah and here's another funny story i don't know if i ever told you this i know we've done 649 episodes or is this 650? We are at, this would be two episode 236. And um, some old timer, this is before ATM and cell phones. And if you made an arrest in New York and the guy had no ID and was wanted on a warrant in Alaska, yeah, you were now at work for 36, 48 hours with no money, mm. no, you know, no, you know, phone, you know, you can't call your wife. You got to go to a pay phone, call, collect. So an old timer taught me that he took a $5 bill 
rolled it up and slid it into the muzzle of his handgun. Mm. So if he was ever out there and he was totally broke and said, oh, I got $5. Did I ever tell you the story? No. And uh, I did it. Right, I thought it was a, it's just a funny story to have, and it's a quick way to You're find like, five dollars. I'll put five bucks down the. Is it the muzzle, the barrel of the gun? Yeah, through the front. Wow! And then if you want it, you just got to grab it like tweezer like and. Oh shit! I'd be worried about anything going. You know what I mean? Like just. I don't. You're not supposed to look into the barrel of a gun. Of course, but they're New York City cops. So you're sort of like, mm, yeah. you get used to it, I guess, after a while. Well, you don't. You're hoping you don't have to reach for it, yeah, right? It can yeah, sit yeah. in there for twenty years. Yeah. But this is where the story takes a twist. I remember putting the $5 bill. I remember tucking it up in the muzzle of my Ruger Service 6. Not an automatic, a revolver. You know what I mean? That looked like it was from the Civil War. And then recently on Facebook, transit cops have this big thread of the funniest story you heard. And there's a million of them. Hmm. People run over by the train, this, that, who's sleeping, who's out on a boat, who's, you know, who's having sex with who. Well, you know, one of the guys in my homeless outreach, you know, he made love to the homeless women. You know that. Yeah. Remember what his catchphrase was? You never know what's under those seven ski coats. Nine ski Nine. coats. Nine Central ski coats. Central be advised he gets A for effort. He gets A for effort. You never know what's under those nine ski coats, Central. Probably a skateboard with a stained glass uh, underneath. <laughs> and I forgot what I was talking about. What was the story? You hit $5 in the muzzle oh, of a gun. Oh, I'm so glad that would have killed me. Somebody put, I think it was Mike Fanning, just put, who remembers when DeResta blew apart a $5 bill at the pistol range? Oh. I don't remember that, but how else could that, I don't think that story could go, become a legend on yeah. its own. It was like confetti, and, unexpected. And I even put, I don't remember that, is that true? And he said, you told me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. And guess what he is, Mike Fanning? He went from the NYPD, a detective. Mm -hmm. He is the police chief off of like South Carolina, some island. Mm. And he's the same exact guy in Jaws. Mm. He's got to deal with the weather, wow. the sharks, the tourists. Wow. <laughs> By the way, I heard somebody told me a story where they, they knew a guy who had um, hit a bunch of hundreds in, in the muzzle of the gun or the barrel of the gun. F maybe forgot it was there. I don't know what happened. Somehow the wife took it to the shooting range. And then when he saw that, she's like, what was that? And that's when it hit him like, oh, shit. That money was in there. He totally forgot to tell her that's where he hid the money. What money? His own money, like hundreds inside of the. Oh wow! Like at the house, you know how people would like not they'd be afraid. Yeah, you're getting all dramatic on me. Uh, does someone get killed in this no, story? No, 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 <laughs> no. He just lost hundreds of dollars because he was. Stuck. Yeah, my story was better. Well, it was a great story. <laughs> Central B advised. Uh, I don't know where he was leading. I don't know if he's going to get sad on me. No one got sad. It was just a more amount of money. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a similar story with a larger amount. Yeah. But no, I just thought yeah. I was like, oh, God, she reached in to get the money no. and blew her eye out. That's right. No. Papa I'll never, San, tell, no, a come like, home. I'll never tell a story like that. <laughs> Not on this podcast. Papa San, no, come home. Chop suey. You guys can D him directly. <laughs> He'll tell you that story. But, uh, yeah. So oh, but uh, and so in Long Island, all the Italians yeah. had their own. You're never going to believe this. They all every real Italian were my friends' fathers. Mm. So all my friends that are 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, their dads yeah. are plumber, a uh, 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 tile, marble, brick. You know what I mean? Gardeners, and um, they all spoke Italian to each other. And that watch this. Mm. That's the first time I ever realized what an inside joke was. You know what an inside joke is, right? Sure. It's between two people. It's right. funnier. It's a, a ongoing thing. Yeah. And uh, my friend Pat Badaro and his dad. Like, you can tell an inside joke that only you and I will get and then local comedians. Uh, remember the joke? Uh, we'll both say the name. You would say, you could you could curse on this one. What's the joke you usually say? Who's D? Yeah. Oh, who's D do I have to S to get out of showbiz? And then you've tagged it with, and we'll both say it. Perry, Perry Kurtz. Kurtz. <laughs> <laughs> So, so that's, a, that's, that's see, an example of an inside joke. I, I would see these old Italian fathers. Yeah, that like I'd walk up and they'd go, 
and they'd like laugh at me. But I knew oh, that, that they were doing something. That sucks. Yeah. yeah. And they were talking it in a different language yeah. so they could talk freely. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Whether yeah. I was getting fat or I had a shit stain. Who knows what they're... Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah. they, it was the first time I ever saw an inside joke. And not just that, they all have these crazy gardens. They grow yeah. grapes. They grow uh, zucchini. <clears throat> but the green grapes would hang. And then... Like every, there had to be like one week. I whenever tomatoes reach their maturity, mm-hmm. and they would pick, you know, hundreds of them would be on the kitchen table, and then they would. I don't know if they diced them up. I just remember them. Maybe they peeled them, so the tomato would be peeled, a fresh tomato. And then there was all kinds of jars and empty bottles from the whole year, like wine bottles, Pepsi Cola, Shasta. Lemon up, you know what I mean. Anything that could hold. I almost remember lemon up. That's like a knockoff of Seven Up. Yeah, or maybe I don't remember. Ten cents a can. Wow. No flip top. You had a. Oh yeah. Central B advised. Yeah. I need a can <laughs> opener. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Pepper. Ooh, somebody got a cream soda, thinking it was a root beer. Yeah, and uh, and they would all. Mush, I remember, the, you know, the mothers and the aunts, mm. like, taking this ground tomato pulp and mushing it into, like, a like a, just a, a completely random wine bottle. And then somehow they'd cork up the top, move it. And that, from what I gather, that's what they made tomato sauce out of throughout the whole year instead of ground crushed like we would buy. Yeah. Even if you, or a lot of people just get jawed sauce. That's interesting. The inside joke, and you were the punchline for that, and that's like that's a weird feeling to be like. Mm-hmm. Well, I watch this. I I found it more interesting. Yeah. Than I did like it hurt my feelings. Yeah. Because they would do it about everybody. Yeah. It wasn't just me. Yeah, that's true. And you know what I mean? Older, I, and yeah. They're just yeah. you know. Nobody. About good but they say about yeah, yeah, yeah. eat. Yeah. eat. Do you know what stuttas eat means? No. It means shut up. It's the funniest <laughs> terminology. That's Italian. Stuttas eat. Stuttas eat. Stuttas eat. Like. Like if you were like an Italian comedian, yeah, like yeah. in the eighties, yeah, yeah, it'd be like I couldn't really understand what my dad was saying, but when he leaned in and said "shtatazit," yeah, she shut up. Have you ever heard this? Have you ever heard <laughs> of like, um, "cayete, cayete"? No, "cayete way." Really? What is that? So I grew up in Fresno, mostly uh, you know Mexican na- neighborhood or Latino or whatever they're using these days. Um, you know, Latinx, but I don't know anyone that wants to be called Latinx. If you like it, leave Look it in the comments. Look at you getting all political. No, I'm just saying, like, everyone I've talked to, anyways, caete means, like, shut up. Like, caete, like, shut right? up. Right, no Mexicans in Long Island. Caete. Not a one. Caete. Not a one. Wow. Never saw one. Ever. It's funny, I remember growing up in, you know, where I grew up, and, uh, you know, my friends all swore to God they thought Elvis was Mexican. Mm-hmm. You know, because <laughs> they thought Elvis was Mexican. <laughs> you know? It's funny, and and I was the odd man out growing up in Fresno, you know. Especially with the bright red hair, dude. The bright red hair, you know. That's kind of where my beginning of comedy started with them calling me Rooster. Hey, what's up, guy? What's up, Rooster? Arr! You know all that stuff, you know. <laughs> Guess what? In an unusual happenstance, a few people on the uh, Facebooks. Call me Rooster. Do they really? Yeah, for wonder, real. I wonder why. I could tell you why. Tell me why. When I was on JV football, we'd all go to the varsity games. It was a big event in Long Island. You all went to the football game, and it was fun, and it was, you know, it was fall. It was cool. The leaves were falling. It was the greatest time ever, the fall in New York. Mm. And um, at least once or twice per game, they would go rooster, 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 and and somebody who had a little bit of chutzpah and or funniness, I can't believe I did it. It, it. I forgot I did it. But people call me, like, once a month, someone will say, hey, rooster, how's L.A.? You still with the movies? <laughs> and I forgot that that was my nickname. So, like, I would stand up and go, I had a little rooster. And the whole crowd goes, yeah, yeah. And his name was Fred. Yeah, yeah. But he voted for Oceanside. He rooted for Oceanside. So I shot him in the head. Yeah, yeah. And then I got another rooster. Yeah, yeah. And I can't remember. His name is like Anthony. And why? Because he roots for Hewlett. And it's something that rhymes with Anthony. 
You know what I'm saying? Like in yeah, other words, yeah. we were Hewlett, and we yeah. found another rooster that that in the story that voted for us or rooted for us. Yeah. So I, I laid him in the bed. I, it was like some other punchline I can't get to. But I can't believe yeah. that I used to do that. Wow. So my nickname and your nickname were both Rooster. Wow. Pound it. Well, that doesn't happen often. Connections. You know, it was another nickname, and I didn't like it. It made me cry. What is it? Uh, we used to go to PBC, Police Boys Club, all the p- kind of poor kids, middle class, mm-hmm. ca- uh, Irish, Catholic, Italian. We all went every night, seven nights a week. You go to the gymnasiums open, or you could lift weights. You know, it's like a... Yeah, after school. Like a, a, even early Eve, keep yeah. you from drinking drugs. Yeah. You know, and everybody went. Yeah. And certain guys played basketball, certain guys played knock hockey, certain guys just went to hang out. It was a very, very, very social, fun event. And there was baseball in this month and football in this month. And we, they would take us to Met games and Yankee games, PBC Beach, PBC Roller Rink. Mm. Right? We'd all go to a roller rink. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, like a whole well, bus full of well, kids. What was the nickname? Uh, four. They call you Four? Oh, they called me. I, I blocked it out. You said they call you Rooster. They you called said- me Costello. Oh, like Abbott and Costello? Because I look like Lou Costello at like eight years old. No <laughs> neck. I have fat. Oh. And it re- dude, it yeah. made me cry. Hey, I know what it's like to be bullied. That's right. You should get booked because of that. I haven't even thought of that. Wow. <laughs> Costello. Central be advised. He's having a flashback. Central be advised. They called me Costello. <laughs> they called me Costello. <laughs> I cried once when we went to the PBC beach. Central be advised. Not Sue Costello. Not Sue. That's funny. Lou. Lou. I went to the beach and they said I had man chichis. As a kid, I had man boobs. Central 1085. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you. So you like skateboarding? I like skateboarding. I was really good at skateboarding. So was I. And I. And I mean, we. Used, I used to call it that thing you were describing. We called it. I don't know what they called it there, but we used to call it tic tacking, where you go tic tac. You go, yeah, I can go do down that. the street. Tic tac, tic tac. I, yeah. I, I don't do know the, what we call. I do the three sixty. I would try to make it go around twice. But then when I decided that I'm, I, I realized I wasn't that good of a skateboarder. When I started seeing them, like, you know, doing the, you know, like the half pipes and going into the right. empty I went swimming to watch poles, this. I all that stuff. A, I, was I, like, I went to yeah. a few skateboard parks. Yeah, but they were nothing like that. Like everyone got in line and you went down just a hill and up a hill and back off. Yeah, and I went to a, a couple of concrete wave. But I went on the soft ones. I wasn't down in a pool right. in Encino yeah, no, off no, the no. lip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After but that. I, I loved all the magazines, and yeah. I used to draw all the logos in the way they drew them. I was a real skateboard nut and taught myself how to ski, snow ski, which is not easy without an instructor. Wow. You just have to learn by falling and falling, getting soaking wet and falling and getting yeah. soaking wet. Yeah. And I taught myself how to surf in the ocean. Wow, pounded. dude, that's good. To Troy to, Flintstone. To be able to get Troy up. Flintstone. What's that? Fred was a, a surfer in one episode. Oh, it's funny. I was Troy Flintstone. <laughs> dude, I could never get up on the board. No, I could. I could for one summer oh, of 88. Good. Summer of 88, I twisted my ankle mm. in a bar in the spring. Uh-oh. But I walked into work. I walked very slow, got in my uniform, and the yeah. second roll call broke, I threw myself on the floor. Yeah. Hey, got an injury on duty. Got witnesses. Thank you. <laughs> so it, the, ju- it just happened. So the whole yeah. summer of 88, um, you're supposed to be locked in your house. When you're a civil servant in New York, they lock you in your home. You can only leave to go to a house of worship or the doctor or the store. When? But Why would they lock you in the Because house? they want you to come to work sooner. They think that that's torture to be locked in the house. It's uh, the stupidest wait, thing. Well, you said when you call out, call in sick or something, or you're trying yeah, you to... call in sick. You have to be locked in the house. Oh, I see. That yeah. you just can't go work a second job. Yeah. It's the stupid, and people check on you. Yeah. And if they find you, they make an example. They right. transfer you. Mm. Where you, if you live in in Long Island, they transfer you to the Bronx. Mm. You know, so now you got to pay three tolls. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, they, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It, so, um, so you had that twisted ankle. So you called in sick. You got me to be out for four uh, days. No, or... I went and saw the the surgeon. Mm. There's a transit police surgeon. You know, it was like a legit injury, like it swelled up. And um, this is a true story. It sounds like shtick lock. Um, the doctor that worked for the transit police was, um, he played for the other team. That's all. Nice guy. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, I gotcha. And but he was a civil servant in the transit police doctor, so you know something went wrong. You know what I mean? He was making five hundred and ten dollars a week. Mm. You know what I mean? He doesn't have yeah. his own practice. Right, right. And you and you can get green dot. So they put a green dot. I think I told the story on your paperwork, and that means you could travel and leave the house, and they, they don't check on you. Oh, that's good. Yeah, but the only way to get green dot is to let this doctor. <laughs> He wanted to juggle your, uh, mm. Mm. he wanted to touch you in a, in a bad place. And guess what? You're getting green dot for the whole summer. <laughs> <laughs> I twisted my ankle. Yeah, look, so what? June 3rd. I'll be back August 18th. So long, suckers. <laughs> Into the fall. Wow. Into the fall, I had green dot, and I went surfing every day with the bad ankle. Wow. That's where I learned how to surf. And then, hold on, when I went back in the fall of, I guess this was 88, when I went, yeah. the fall of 88, I was yeah. put in the rubber gun squad. No mm. gun. So now you're sitting in some rubber room with mm. this guy who beat his wife, this guy who's arrested for drugs, this guy who shot somebody, and, they, and it's all cops that are ready to be fired because they don't have a gun. Damn. And one of them was Huggy Bear's brother. Wow. From Starsky and Hutch. Oh, cool. His brother was in the rubber gun squad with me. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> Antonio Vargas, I yeah, think his name yeah, is. Yeah. Or Fargus or Vargas. Yeah, or and his brother was in the rubber yeah. gun. Wow. And then I finally went back to full duty like in December and uh, had a couple of different assignments mm. with the rubber gun squad and met a lot of fun, festive cops. Mm. And uh, I'll tell you when this was. We were listening to the uh, Dan Quayle um spelling potato no better yet uh i knew john kennedy oh, yeah. you know john kennedy oh, yeah the debate the debate yeah, we yeah. were listening to that that's so that's when it all happened that, who, who just said that again was it george bush or reagan so, no B benson hal benson R joe benson oh, oh yeah, yeah yeah joe bent's right yeah, or something yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> that guy jay I benson knew, and you are no that's right i remember that line okay so Oh, when that, I came back, uh -huh. I got the gun back. I went back to District 34 to Coney yeah. Island. And I started getting these letters from like uh, like an agency, like a, like a government agency, like Medicare or something. Mm. And I'm throwing them out. And a cop said to me, dude, they want to settle. You fell on transit police property. They want to settle before you sue them. Mm. They're offering you money. These envelopes you've been throwing out. I said, you got to be kidding me. So you remember I twisted my ankle at Chauncey's drinking. Yeah. yeah. And I stumbled into work, got my uniform on, took a dive, right? Like an actor, had witnesses. Now they give me my gun back and someone says, dude, you got to answer these letters. Answer it, get a little thing. You have a court date, mm. a court date. Bring documentation, be ready to tell us what happened. I go and it's the tiniest, it's a judge at a desk like this size and I sit on that side and he hits a tape recorder. Be advised, this is uh, Judge uh, Jeffrey uh, Harmon. I'm with P.O. DeResta Shield 1623. Today's date is November 12th, 1988. Officer DeResta twisted his ankle in District 34 right after roll call, and uh, he's going to tell us what happened. Officer DeResta, what happened? <laughs> Well, I came out of roll call, and I slipped on a banana peel, and I fell, and I hurt my ankle, and I had 12 witnesses. Here they are. Thank you. And he looked at it, and, and he goes, all right, you got 25% loss in your ankle for the rest of your life, which I knew I didn't because I just surfed the whole summer on a surfboard standing up. You follow? Yeah. And the next line slayed me. He goes, we are going to offer you $1,800. If you agree, you could leave with a check. <laughs> I did everything I could to not laugh in his face. Mm. And it was like, you know, it, it might as well have been, you know, you're broke. I mean, I wasn't, we didn't have kids yet, but I was dating my wife. We might have yeah. even been, I think we might have just got engaged to be married. Yeah. When I gave her the ring, I said, will you marry me someday? I thought someday would buy me time. Yeah. Six weeks later. So when you got the thousand bucks, you were like, we got eighteen hundred. Yeah. It was like all the money in the world, and we got this little tiny mini TV that had the VH, oh, the yeah. VHS at those. the bottom. Oh yeah, you know everything yeah. in one, and it was in every kitchen we had for like thirteen years. Wow, it was always funny to just look at that TV that at the time was like you know five or seven hundred dollars because it had a. 
little VHS thing. Be yeah. kind. Rewind. <laughs> it's great. You love skateboarding. I love skateboarding. How about roller skating? Did you ever get into roller skating? I did. We played roller hockey. And, and forget it. We went from... We went, me and Paul Greenfield went from the metal skate, like... Oh, yeah, you, metal but skates. You, but you tied them to the bottom of your, your shoe. Sneakers, they weren't I remember even that. boot-like. Oh, yeah, I had those, They too. looked like a, like a bad skeletal crab shell yeah. that rotted away and then yeah. had leather straps on it. Yeah, And it had yeah. metal wheels. Did metal. It? And I think they even had a thing called a skate key. <laughs> I didn't have it, but you know about that? Yeah. It's where you would tighten the skis. I, and, then, and then it jumped to rubber wheels, which yep. was like... Yeah. It was like it was like reinventing the world. Oh my god. Hold gosh, on. And yeah. then it went to big heavy plastic ski boots. Yeah. With ball bearing oh, yeah. rubber. I mean, you were like I love those. I you had went those. from being like yeah. in like a uh what do they call those things in China where they carry in it? A ricket? A, a rickshaw. It went from being on a rickshaw to driving like uh, a Mercedes Benz that cost five hundred thousand yeah. dollars, dude. Now that you said, I remember that I, I, I had the boot kind, <laughs> yeah. And then you said the next kind. I was like, I remember that I had like it, look, it almost looked like a regular sneaker, but it had wheels on yeah. it, like those polyurethane. Or yeah. Whatever. Oh, remember those when yeah. they came out? Oh yeah. And then the, and the brake would be on the front, right? Wasn't yeah, it on the yeah, toe. You, you dragged your toe. It was on the toe, and I used to love that stuff, man. I remember, you know, it was it, when I got those. I was it was probably. It was probably the end of the seventies, er, beginning of the early eighties, because I, I remember just skating all the time, like all around. Like, well, the, we played roller yeah. hockey. Wow! So we all skated. And we used to blast the music. My mom would move the garage, the car out of the garage, and so we'd use the driveway and the garage to break in and out. No, no, we, no, that comes later. But the skating, just listening to music and yeah. pumping up the jams and. And you guys used to do like roller skating? Well, we to- played roller hockey and then you went to the roller rink and you just went around in a circle and they'd say, men only, next up, men only. Oh, yeah. And they'd play like the first Motley Crue album, oh, you yeah, know, yeah. 10 seconds for love. We had a place called Roller Town where I grew up. Well, Rollert. we went to PBC Roller Rink, I told you. And, uh, you know, all kind of the poor white trash kids went like on every Friday night. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And then we also went ice skating and played ice hockey. Did you? Mm. You didn't play ice hockey. I didn't play ice. I didn't even. I didn't even ice skate until I was. I want to say forty oh, four years old. And guess what? I was good at it. The first time I did it, I could do it. I was like, "This is easy." I used to love it because I had all those years of like you know roller. It wasn't like it was foreign to me. I, I couldn't believe how good I was. I mean, I wasn't like I great, loved but, it, but I could I could just skate around the rink. I could do it, man. I wasn't like remember when up. Adrian and Rocky went on the yeah, first date? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, ten dollars, ten bucks. I give you five. It's Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Give it a blades. <laughs> <laughs> what about this? What about okay? So Seven we, minutes. We did skateboarding. We did roller skating. What about rollerblading? Did you ever rollerblade? Yes, yes, I did. I uh, for a very short time. Then I got married and had. It was a cop with kids. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think I think everyone in the whole world had a set of rollerblades that they were like they were peacocking the ass off them. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to rent rollerblades. I never owned my own rollerblades. <laughs> Rental. But I would rent the rollerblades when I lived in San Diego for a brief. Five time. minutes. Yeah. Now with the rollerblades, <laughs> I used to rent the, the. Used to get the guards. Because you had to get those guards for your hands, so if you fell, oh, it was oh, it was metal though, so oh. it was like, it didn't hurt you. So I, had, I used to rent that with the the guards, and then the knee. Uh, you put these little knee, whatever, like the knee pads or something, or yes, whatever that. Is. So that way you'd fall and you wouldn't hurt and stuff. But I didn't like rollerblading as much as roller skating. No, I like roller skating when I when I had the yeah. rubber wheels with the precision yeah. bearings. And then the brakes on rollerblades are different, right? They're on the back. Yeah. Why are they on the back? I don't know why they're on the back, but. That was always weird. You know what rollerblades can do? S its own D. Take it could S its mother's D. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah. Yeah. Pound it. How can I be so funny? I know, dude. And then, then that, that fad just went away, right? Roller skating, roller blades. It's kinda I mean, for some people they're still doing it, but I'm, I used to parasail, I, surf, back. ski, you hold parasailed? on. Parasailed? I parasailed and tell I Tell the good not, people we gotta wrap it up though, I but did tell not the good like people it at all. Tell the good people what parasailing is. So you're on the back of a boat. And the rope is like slackish, and then the boat takes off, and all of a sudden you're pulled off a dock, yeah. And you catch air right away. And when you're watching it, it looks gentle, and it looks like it's going to change your life, yeah. And when you're up there, yeah, it's a windstorm, mm. and it's like, whoa, 
I know now I could die. I'm not sitting in a car. I'm not on a bed. I'm not having a drink at a bar. Yeah. I am in a serious, serious, serious hazardous You're place. You're like 50, 60 feet in oh, the air or whatever and, it is. And it just, yeah. it, it seems like the tension can break. The thing, I don't know if you know, Yeah. only last week, a, 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 a mother and two sons, three of them, mm. come down and hit a bridge. No. And it winds up the guy cut the line. There was some kind of wind that way he said if I continue to pull them, they were going to slam down. Wow. So I cut it thinking that they would kind of come in a umbrella-ish yeah. land in the water. Yeah. And instead, the wind took them right into a bridge. Whoa. Pound it. Dude, that's crazy. And they were they were all three up there at the same time? They were all three like on a, in tandem, like arm and arm. One lived. Oh, no. Yeah. Your turn. Uh, Teresta once again took it to a sad place. <laughs> We're going happy memories. He's taken it to the latest <laughs> news source. <laughs> he tried to make it happy at the very end, saying one lived. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Central B advised he's gone parasailing. By the way, the camera died, so I'll be just showing a photo at this part of the podcast. If you're watching it on YouTube, we st we're still going. And uh, don't forget, seriously, guys, if you have an iPhone, it's very easy. Just hop on over to Apple Podcasts, which is probably what you're listening to anyways. Give it five stars and say, hey, this made my night. This made my day. Throw in some of the inside jokes that we say on this podcast. Just give us, give us something on there, and it, it does help other people discover the podcast. Because I guess if they give it five stars in a review, it... It moves it up on the uh, yeah, dude. I'll, I, I, it, that's all in your area. But I am. Uh, I might. I think I have a new idea. I'm going to announce it right now. They're going to end on a very nice note. Please do. I do a lot of sets. I videotaped them. I do a lot of backroom stuff. I'm like, you know, I'm on a very unusual circuit, mm -hmm. but I am really getting deep down and and you know, I'm uh, I'm honing my craft even yeah. after all these years. Yeah. And I was thinking of starting to videotape. Well, I videotaped them anyway. And then maybe just kind of get a following online at these, you know what I mean? These oh, yeah. kind of more unusual. Yeah. That it's not just my greatest set I ever did. Right. It's like you know, it's 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 tonight. It's, it's tomorrow night. It's yeah. the night. You know what I mean? And if, it's the CD area. Yeah, it's the yeah, great it's, area. It's just the good it's, gig. You know it's what the, it is? It's the pool halls. It's, it's the. It's, uh, it's keep talking. I'm gonna make sure that camera's off. It's when Rocky fought Spider Rico. Yeah. <laughs> when he was like, I'm gonna go like the Mr. T gym, right? When he left the big shiny gym and Rocky goes to the the little gyms. That's what you're doing. Oh, I see. I didn't know that. That was in two or three. That was three. three. That was Rocky three. Oh, he went back to his roots. Yep, yep. Because he was, uh, you know, that phrase they say where they're like, uh, you know, about when you're a boxer, like it's hard to get out of bed when you're sleeping in silk sheets. We thought I'm comfortable, and that was the problem. So then he went back to oh yeah, okay, that's what I'm doing. So that's what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're hitting the the um the liquid zoo. You're hitting the you know all these is it called Corbin Bowl? Corbin Bowl bowling alley. But it has a real comedy club in the back. It feels like a real comedy club. How was the uh you know we did the rock and roll pizza place uh a couple of weeks ago. Oh, that was fun. That was fun. Watch this. If I if I'm gonna start getting booked, I'm gonna just use that night. Like that night was for me. Yeah, it was only ten minutes, but I was hitting on all cylinders. As were you. Yeah. But um, yeah, I liked it. I liked it a lot. It was fun, and the guy was from Long Island. The owner was from. I mean, half of the food was named the Massapequa Burger, the Seaford Onion Rings. Dude, it was. These great. are Long Island towns. It was great, man. It was rock and roll pizza. It was in Simi Valley, Slimy Valley, you know, Slimy Valley. Man, you rocked it, dude. You rocked it. It was fun. The day um, I met Robert De Niro, the day I met Rob. You know who Robert De Niro is, right? Mm -hmm. The day I met him, I had a gig that night for the first time ever in my life in Slimy Valley. So Slimy Valley is a nice mental anchor for me. You did for real? For real? Yeah. The you day met him in L.A. and then you I met him in L.A. Wow. I called for City on a movie wow. set. You know, I'm a movie star. You know that. Yeah. And um, that night, I just happened to have a gig, and uh, I said, now, how to say it? I go, I, met, I hung out with Robert De Niro today, <laughs> and now I'm in Slimy Valley yeah. in the back of a bowling lane. How did that feel, by the way, to, to go from a movie set to a gig in Simi Valley? Um, well, I, I, I've, I probably have the most extreme, like, I, I've headlined Caroline's in Manhattan on a weeknight, headlined. yeah. yeah. 
And four hours later, I'm walking underneath Caroline's, underneath in the subway station when it's right above us, mm. you know, looking for bums in the subway. So yeah. I've gone from, you know, t- Tom Snyder to the right. next day, I'm back in the homeless van. Yeah. And, so, and from the homeless van to Tom Snyder. Right. So I've had these, you know, right. I, I could kind of handle yeah. both things. But what was the one you asked me about? Uh, De Niro. Cimo oh, Valley. so yeah, yeah. So De Niro, yeah. you know. Uh, uh, met De Niro and same, uh, and then you know just continued on my regular sets. I, I, I was gonna say I'm even just being in the audience. I remember once we went to see a, like a concert with like you know Kid Rock, and there was like twenty thousand people in the fire and the pyro and then all the hits and then he's in between he's talking telling stories and then he's back you know rocking it and then I remember going from that to like I had to do a gig. Like a like a small gig, you know, and it just felt like wow, like I'm going to like like he's living in this fantasy world that I would love to be in, like that kind of venue, and that energy to like, I mean, you could substitute him for any other musician, yeah, that's doing right, that, right, to to play in some place that's like no, I watched this thirty in, people in a weird and, way. I've never really like you know, you know, I've hung out with Sandra Bullock all day on a movie set making funnies, and then that night, um, you know, in front of six people at the uh, Velveeta Room. <laughs> in Austin, Texas. Yeah. Do you know the Velveeta Room's reputation? Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, Pips in Brooklyn, where I started, and the Velveeta Room were considered the two toughest places in Austin, Texas? to get laughs. No, to get laughs in the yeah. whole world. <laughs> wow. In Austin, Texas, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah well, Velve- Pips is in Brooklyn, yeah. and uh, the, uh, what was it called? You said the Velveeta Room? Velveeta Room. In Austin, Texas? Yeah, in Austin on mm-hmm. 6th Street. You ever been there? Yeah, I played there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you get laughs? I did. Okay. I did. You didn't feel uh, like it, you had to work for it? Um, if not, you don't have to fill that in. I didn't really feel like okay. it. I felt like it was... Well, I, I remember I did the Cap City Comedy Club, and then they were like, hey, we're going to go to this other spot, and I did the other okay, spot. Okay, yeah, I did Cap City, too. I had fun there. And I remember seeing like uh, backstage, they had Bill Hicks's Rules of Comedy or whatever. Somebody had printed out and taped to the backstage wall. Like, Yeah, an act is what you do when you're not having fun or something. Yeah, all that <laughs> stuff. And, and I was just like, yeah, you know. Like, yeah. You know, like, yeah, good for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not going to, you know, I didn't revere it or anything. I thought, that's that's cool. I don't, you know. No, the guy that gave Rodney Dangerfield the line, I don't get no respect. Okay? His name's Georgie Starr. Georgie Schultz mm-hmm. started Pip's first comedy club in America, allegedly full-time. He gave Rodney the line, I don't get no respect. I don't get no respect, okay? So he's comedy, go- he's a go- comedy god. And he said, the way you want to get successful as a comedian is to work the material, mm. work it, work it, work it, suck it, F it, lick it, and just when you get sick of it, do it again. <laughs> That's right. You know what I mean? As compared to, I'm going to improv every show I ever do. Are we done? You're Almost checking done. your I, emails. Was, no, I'm not checking the emails. What was that guy's name again? I, Story Chop. The, what was the, the rules? The, we just, I just, I just Bill blanked. Hicks. Bill Hicks. Let's look it up. <laughs> <laughs> vamp. Do you want me to vamp? Yeah, we're going to wrap it up. Did I tell you I was a transit cop? By the way, guys, this is all extra. This is extra. We should have wrapped up Did I tell you that ago. I was working the night that Tupac got shot? You know what? At this point in the show, just tell me about Chop Suey, Papa Son. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Here we go. Here we go. Here's the rules of comedy, according to Bill Hicks or whatever. You know, hey, listen, they're kind of okay. How uh, many are there? Oh, that's a lot. No, where are they? here they are. Here they are. <clears throat> Truncated. Bill Hicks principle principles of comedy if you can be yourself on stage nobody else can be you and you have the law of supply and demand covered that's good i agree i agree moving on the act is something you fall back on if you can't think of anything else to say okay yeah. okay that's central good. be advised that's uh that's a that's 1063 on that one that's a 63 at the house only do what you think is funny never just what you think they will like even though it's not that funny to you i like that too only do what you think is funny, Duresta. Never just what you think they will like, even though it's not that funny to you. You know what I mean? Like, I know right now everyone's going to like a joke about uh, Amber Heard, but even though you have no interest in that, don't do it, you know? Oh, don't do it. Yeah, only do what you think is funny. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what it. you're doing. That's oh, what I see doing. what you're saying. Yeah, don't pander yeah. to the... Uh, yeah, don't just be like, well, everyone's doing jokes about, uh, you know... Amber Heard. Or whatever. Uh, never ask them, is this funny? No. Oh, tell yeah. them this is funny. That's another good rule. Yeah, without a doubt. You know what it is? I don't think I read the rules. I think I just saw that it was posted and all the Well, I, I know that, uh, yeah. again, I hear this 10 times a week. Yeah. Uh, 
What else should I talk about? Yeah. Or I'm going to do, uh, watch this. I did a thing the other night, and everyone had uh, notes. Mm. You are not married to any of this shit. If something happens, taking you off on a tangent. Never go back and finish a bit. Just move on. When I did the Tonight Show, they told me that. They said, we applaud. They go, these crowds applaud a lot. When, they, when you to, do a joke, if they applaud, they go, don't go back and try to finish the joke. Just move on to your next topic. Wow, I never heard that. That's that's guess what, what I do? Um, I'll, I did it tonight. If I get lost, I just ask the audience where I was. I think it's, I think it's fun and yeah. festive because I know I have a big punchline. And plus, it gets them you know, Gets them invested. And yeah. watch this. A little uh, commonly, uncommonly known man is Buddy Hackett. You know Buddy Hackett? Yeah. He did five bits. Each one took 10 or 15 minutes, and he said, I forgot the ending. Then he did another 15-minute one, and he forgot the ending. Then he did five bits of, in an hour. And guess what happened on his last bit? He forgot the ending. He tied all five together oh, like clockwork. Wow. It was all set up. It was all, uh, oh, God, that's good. Yeah, so. Number six, never ask the audience, how you doing? People who do that can't think of an opening line. They came to see you tell them how they're doing. Asking that stupid question up front just digs a hole. This is the most common mistake made by performers. I want to leave as soon as they say that. Wow. Yeah. I like it. I'm never saying it again. I'm going to tell them how they're doing. Yeah. Said so be advised, Bill Hicks is uh, a... <laughs> yeah. Bill Hicks is in the house. That's right. Number seven, write what entertains you. If you can't be funny, be interesting. I love this. Yeah. These are great rules. I, You know, I've already... Dude, that without even knowing these rules, I've done that before. I remember I did a casino up in... Uh, I'm writing that one down. Well, I'll tell you if you forget. Do, what are you writing down? Do you remember? Be interesting. <laughs> He's writing that down. Be interesting. Yes, write what entertains you. If you can't be funny, be interesting. You haven't lost the crowd. Have something to say and then do it in a funny way. Yeah, I remember I joined a casino once and I thought, because they just weren't they weren't really laughing at any, any of the comedians. Just the way that the place was set up. It was like there was machines going ding, 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 bing, 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 bong, 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 ding, 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 you know, all this kind of crap. So, I mean, how can you really... You know what I mean? They weren't laughing, so I thought, well, let's just be interesting. You know? Nice. I remember taking the remote mic and walking through the crowd, doing crowd work, just being, you know. Because that's funny. I've never seen you be interesting ever, and I know you for 20 years. Well, usually I'm funny, but that night it was interesting. Zing. <laughs> Zing. <laughs> Number eight, I close my eyes and I walk out there, and that's where I start. Honest. Nah, I don't like that. Moving on. Nine. Listen to, listen to what you are saying. Ask yourself, why am I saying it, and is it necessary? This will filter out all of your material and cut the unnecessary words. Uh, see, I've already tuned out. Now it's getting into like, I'm, you know, okay. Number 10, play to the, uh, see, I, I love this, but I heard this from Jimmy Schubert, I, but, but he probably heard it from uh, Bill Dice. Hicks. No, Bill Hicks. Go ahead. Play to, th play to the top of the intelligence of the, no, oh, wait, 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 wait. Play to the top of the intelligence of the room. No, see, Jimmy Schubert said, "Play to the, play to play to your top. Play to the top of your intelligence." So okay, I think he's playing to your own top of your your own intelligence, not of the room. It might be a room full of stupid idiots. So I'm going to play to the top of the intelligence of the room. No, I'm going to do my own intelligence. Okay, moving on. I'm not that invested in this one. Okay, how many more? <laughs> Remember, this is the hardest thing there is to do. If you can do this, you can do anything. Oh, I like that. I love my, he writes, I love my cracker roots. Get to know your family. Be friends with them. I like that. Is that it? That's part one. No, I'm just a, kidding. I'm just kidding. I got an early call in the morning. Early, he's like, I got arm on, what's that thing again? Rough on the front. arm. I got on the arm. Central, be advised, uh, Pocket Party Podcast is uh, almost over. It's going to be 90X, 90X on the Pocket Party. All right, John, dude, I love you, man. Thanks okay. for coming on the show. Yeah, dude, a lot Thanks of fun. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys like those, uh, you know, anything that we did today. We hope it entertained you and made your day a little bit easier. And uh, as some of the people have written, they like uh, when I do the podcast with you. I forget exactly how the guy said I was trying to find it, but he said basically he likes to crack open a cold one and it starts out oh, as nice. evening festivities. Central be advised, uh, some people actually find this entertaining. <laughs> All right, buddy. Okay. Roller skates, but I'm going to look into it. That was awesome. What a great memory. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody listen to Darren Carter. We all know he's the party starter. So if 
you want to listen to a podcast for free, then listen to The Pocket Party.